Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night. Ever had one of those mornings where everything seems normal but you can't shake off an eerie feeling? Picture this. It's a crisp, cool morning. You wake up, stretch out the sleep, and you're already thinking about the day ahead. For me, that's the usual routine. A strong cup of coffee, a quick check of the news, and a glance in the mirror to ensure the bedhead isn't too wild. But it's not just any mirror. Oh no. You see, I've got this thing for selfies. The mirror kind always have. But this mirror, it's different. It's an antique. A relic from a bygone era that I recently added to my collection. Something about its ornate frame and slightly tarnished glass just drew me in. I couldn't wait to capture my reflection in it, make it a part of my selfie chronicles. Little did I know, this seemingly ordinary morning was about to turn into the most terrifying day of my life. It was time for my daily mirror selfie, but something felt different this time. There I was, standing in front of the mirror I had just bought. You see, I have this habit of taking a mirror selfie every day a sort of visual journal to document my life. So I held up my phone, flashed a grin and clicked. A regular day in my life or so I thought. As I lowered my phone to look at the photograph, a chill ran down my spine. There, in the background of the photo was a figure. A shadowy human-like form that definitely wasn't there when I took the picture. I turned around, my heart pounding like a drum in my chest. But there was nothing. Just the same old room, empty as it had always been. I looked back at the photo and there it was, that unsettling presence, clear as day. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, even pinched myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. But no, it was as real as the mirror in front of me. I tried to rationalize it. Maybe it was a trick of the light, a weird reflection or a glitch in the camera. Yeah, that had to be it. It was just a weird glitch. I mean, mirrors don't capture ghosts, right? So I tried again, another selfie, another grin, but the figure, it was still there. Only this time it seemed closer. My heart raced as a cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Whatever it was, it wasn't a trick of the light. This was something else. Something unnatural. I put down my phone, my hands shaking. I could feel a knot in my stomach, a sense of unease creeping over me. The room felt colder, the silence more profound. I felt a shiver run down my spine, a feeling of dread washing over me. I couldn't shake off the feeling that I wasn't alone anymore. My home, once my sanctuary, now felt like a haunted house. The comfort that once enveloped me like a warm blanket had evaporated, replaced with an icy chill that seemed to seep into my very bones. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, they all took on a sinister undertone. The whispering started as a soft murmur, barely discernible over the hum of the refrigerator or the ticking of the clock. Then it gradually grew louder, a sibilant sound that seemed to echo from the walls, the floors, everywhere and nowhere all at once. The whispers were unintelligible, a jumble of sounds that made no sense, yet filled me with an inexplicable dread. They were there when I woke in the middle of the night, when I was alone in the shower, even when I was making coffee in the morning. They were constant, like a haunting melody playing on a loop, never ending, never ceasing. Things around the house started to move. My keys wouldn't be where I left them, doors I knew I had shut were found ajar, lights would flicker on and off without any rhyme or reason. It was as if an invisible hand was playing a cruel joke, adding to my growing sense of unease. My selfies, once a source of vanity, became distorted, twisted into grotesque parodies of my face. Each photo, a chilling reminder of the unwelcome guest that seemed to have taken up residence in my home. I could feel it. A presence, a malevolent force growing stronger with each passing day. It was as if the very air in the house had become dense, heavy with this entity's malevolence. The fear, the dread, they clung to me, a constant companion in a house that no longer felt like home. I knew then I was not alone. I could feel the presence getting stronger. The terror was palpable, a living, breathing entity that seemed to thrive on my fear. My home, my sanctuary had become a place of nightmares and I was trapped in its horrifying grip. I decided to investigate the history of the mirror. What I found was bone chilling. The mirror, a seemingly innocent piece of decor had a dark past that was about to turn my world upside down. Digging through countless records and old newspaper clippings, I found the original owner of the mirror, a man known for dabbling in the dark arts who lived in the early 18th century. His name was Cornelius, a character shrouded in mystery and fear. Cornelius was infamous for his sinister practices, 
and the mirror was his most prized possession. He believed it to be a portal, a gateway to another realm, a realm where he could trap and control souls. The townsfolk lived in dread, fearing they might be his next victim. But one day, Cornelius disappeared without a trace, and the mirror was lost to time, until now. Suddenly the selfie, the spectral figure, everything made a dreadful sense. The mirror wasn't just a mirror, it was a prison. And by taking that fateful selfie I had unknowingly released a captive soul. A soul that Cornelius had trapped centuries ago. A soul now wandering in my home appearing in reflections desperate and possibly dangerous. A cold shiver ran down my spine as I realized the magnitude of my situation. My heart pounded in my chest like a frantic drum, the blood in my veins turning to ice. I was living in a horror story and the villain was a vengeful spirit, unleashed by my own curiosity. I could feel its presence around me, a cold spectral gaze that followed my every move. The air was heavy with its desperation, its longing for freedom. It was trapped for centuries and now it was free. Free to exact its revenge, free to claim its next victim. Me. The realization was horrifying, suffocating. I was in the clutches of an entity far beyond my understanding. I had to find a way to send the spirit back to retrap it within the mirror or else. I shuddered at the thought. I had to find a way to send the spirit back or I would be its next victim. I devised a plan, my only hope to free myself from this nightmare. The weight of the situation had sunk in, and I knew I couldn't run away from it anymore. I decided to face the spirit confronted head on. But how does one go up against an entity that is not of this realm? The mirror had become a portal, a gateway for this spirit to torment me. And it all started with a selfie. A simple innocuous act had spiraled into a terrifying ordeal. So. It seemed fitting that a selfie is where it should end. I decided to take another selfie, this time at the stroke of midnight, hoping to trap the spirit back into the mirror. I spent the day preparing for the night. My mind was a whirlwind of fear, apprehension, and a strange kind of determination. I had to be ready, mentally and physically, for whatever this spirit had in store for me. I couldn't afford any mistakes. I was going to reclaim my life, or lose it trying. As the hours ticked by, I felt my resolve harden. I had to remind myself why I was doing this. This wasn't just about me anymore. I had to protect my loved ones, ensure they wouldn't be the next victims of this malevolent force. This spirit had to be stopped, and I was the only one who could do it. I spent the evening in quiet contemplation, steadying my nerves, steeling myself for what was to come. I had to be brave not just for myself, but for everyone I cared about. The fear was still there, gnawing at the edges of my courage, but I wouldn't let it consume me. I couldn't. As the clock neared midnight, I could feel the tension in the air. It was palpable, like a storm brewing on the horizon. I picked up my phone, the same one that had started this whole mess, and turned on the camera. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, a drumbeat of anticipation and fear. As midnight approached, I could feel my heart pounding. It was now or never. The clock struck midnight. It was time to face my fears. My heart pounded in my chest, echoing the ticking of the second's hand as I raised the phone, ready to take the selfie. I could feel it. That spectral presence, stronger than ever. It was like a chill breeze, blowing through the room, raising goosebumps on my skin. An unnatural coldness pervaded the room, seeping into my bones. I could hear the faint rustle, the soft whisper of the spirit, as if it was right behind me. It was a sensation that was both thrilling and terrifying. The room seemed to tremble, objects around me vibrating, rattling in their places. It was a symphony of the supernatural, the crescendo building, the anticipation unbearable. I held my breath, my finger hovering over the shutter, and then I clicked. In that instant, the room plunged into darkness, then silence. The stillness was eerie, the suspense unbearable. Did I succeed, or did I just invite a nightmare into my life? The mystery remains. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night.